Texan Global School. Graphing in Excel. In this class, we will discuss the process for graphing trigonometric functions in Excel. In this first example, we will graph the function sine of x. The domain values are proposed by covering a unit circle cycle and exact values seen in previous classes. Let S insert the images as a reminder and reference. The cycle starts at 0 radians and ends at 2 pi radians. Consider that Excel uses the values of the angles in radians. We will place in a parallel cell the angles in degrees, and in the domain their equivalents of the arcs in radians. The cycle in radians from 0 to 2 pi. These values in radians will be the independent variable x that will be substituted in the sine of x function. 0 degrees equals 0 radians. 30 degrees equals pi sixths of a radian. Sixty degrees equals pi thirds of a radian. Ninety degrees equals pi halves a radian, and so on. The more points generated in the table, the better the graphed function will look. Continue to substitute the equivalences of the remaining radian values to complete a cycle from 0 to 2 pi radians. Again, remember that these radian values represent the independent variable. By substituting into the sine of x function, we will get the exact values seen in previous classes. If you can't remember how to transform degrees to radians, we suggest watching one of the previous videos in the trigonometry playlist. Now, let S create the formula for the sine function of x, substituting each domain value to get the range. Remember that you can insert the formula by clicking on the F of X icon or placing an equal symbol in the desired cell. Since the menu is displayed, look for the sine function and place the argument. In this case, the cell of the independent variable calculated in radians. Drag the cells and thus obtain the values of the independent variable. These values are the exact values of the upper right table seen above. Let S highlight the borders of the tab cells with their full values. We will format the entire document by changing the colors of the cells. Now, create the graph. Select the domain and range from the table. Then let S go to Insert and Scatter Plot. We can see the behavior of the trigonometric function sine of x. Starts at 0, 
rises to a maximum point at pi halves comma 1, intercepts the axis at pi comma 0. It goes down to a minimum of half of 3 pi comma negative 1 and goes up to 2 pi comma 0. Now, we will construct the graph of the cosine of x. We won't repeat the whole process of building the table. Simply copy the previous table. Let S give some format to have the document ordered. We will leave the background white and highlight the tab cells. So, change the sine function to the cosine function to obtain the values of the new function. Let S copy the table of exact values seen in previous classes to analyze the tabulation and the graph. We can see that the XCAT values table matches the constructed tabulation. To graph, select the domain and range from the table. Then, go to Insert and Scatter Plot. The cosine function of x starts at the maximum point 0, 1. Goes down by intersecting the x-axis at pi halves, 0. It keeps going down to a minimum point of pi, negative 1. Goes back up intersecting the axis at half of 3 pi, 0. And reaches a maximum point of 2 pi, 1. Finally, we will graph the tangent function of x. Copy the previous table and switch to the tangent function for domain and range. Give format to the document. Now, we will copy the table of exact values to analyze. We can see that the tangent of pi does not exist. The same goes for the half of 3 pi. Graphically, there is a discontinuity called an asymptote. Let S propose values close to those discontinuities. From right and left. Propose domain values to approach, from the left, the asymptote at half pi or about 1.57. Propose 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 1.4. And 1.47. The closer we get to the ordinate, the values tend to positive infinity. Perform the process by approaching the pi halves from the right. We propose 1.9, 1 1.8, 1 1.7. And 1.67.
the ordinate tends to negative infinity as it approaches the discontinuity. Now, propose domain values to approach half of 3 pi from the left, about 4.71. Let S use 4.2, 4.3, 4.4, 4.5, and 4.6. Let S also add 4.62. The closer we get to the ordinate, the graph tends toward infinity. Repeat the process approaching 3 half pi from the right. We propose 5.1, 5, 4.9. And 4.8. The closer we get to the discontinuity, the value of the ordinate tends towards infinity. To graph, we select the domain and range of the table by sections. Starting with the first section without touching the asymptote. Then insert and scatter plot. This process creates the first part of the graph up to pi halves. Right-clicking on the graph. Select Data and Add. We will include the other sections of the tangent function. So, plot the asymptotes, which are lines located at half pi and half of 3 pi. We propose the pi halves comma 13 and pi halves comma negative 13. Remember, we need at least two points to draw a line. and two points for the asymptote located at half of 3 pi. We propose half of 3 pi comma 13 and half of 3 pi comma negative 13. Let us include them to the graph. To differentiate the function's asymptotes, we'll change the asymptotes format to a dotted color. Hence, results the graph of the complete tangent function. The tangent function of x starts at 0, 0. It goes up to infinity, tending towards pi halves. It comes from negative infinity after pi halves. It intercepts the x-axis at pi, 0. And tends again towards positive infinity in half of 3 pi. 
it goes up from negative infinity, intersecting at 2 pi comma 0. Texan Global School Global Online Learning Knowledge for the World www.texanglobalschool.com